Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Archihacks. It's a channel where we talk about all the life hacks for architects. So in today's video, we're going to talk about laptops. We've been getting a lot of questions about which laptop we should get. That's actually a really complicated question because everyone has different budget, different goals, and different preferences. So in this video, we'll hopefully make things a little bit more clear to you by answering these questions. Number one, why do we even need a good laptop? And number two, what specs should we look out for and what is right for you? And third, Mac versus PC, which one is the one for you? And last but not least, we're going to talk about top 5 recommendations from us. Are you guys ready? Let's dive right into it. So first of all, we're going to talk about why should one even consider getting an expensive high-end laptop. And the reason is because architectural softwares require a lot of heavy lifting. And that involves things like 3D rendering, 3D modeling, and all kinds of graphic tasks that require a lot of processing power. So compared to other majors who just need a laptop for taking notes and word processing, this might be a completely different game. And this is why we recommend you aim for higher specs than what you think you'll need, because Somewhere down the road, you might come to a software or certain tasks that require high computational power. In general, laptop is just a hardware and a tool to realize your design. So don't let hardwares limit your design. So number two, what are the specs that we should look out for? If you're not a hardware geek, all the numbers and all the abbreviations might sound a little bit daunting to you. So here are some of the key metrics that you should be looking out for in plain English. So the first one is CPU. CPU is basically the speed at which your computer processes certain tasks. And this basically determines the baseline power of your laptop. And this is measured in clock speed in the unit of gigahertz. And because architectural software requires thousands of calculations per second, having a high CPU becomes extremely important. So what are the numbers that we recommend? We recommend you aim for 2.6 gigahertz minimum and with a clock boost of more than four gigahertz. And moving onwards, let's talk about storage. In today's market, there are two major forms of storage. One is hard drive and second is solid state drive. It's abbreviated by SSD. So in a nutshell, the difference between the two is that SSD is a lot faster but expensive and hardware is cheaper but a lot slower. So which one should you go for? Well, our quick answer is that we should be running our operating system in SSD and storage and long-term storage in hard drive. So if your manufacturer of offers it, do go for hybrid drive where your OS is installed on SSD and your files are stored on hard drive. But if that is not the case, then definitely go for SSD storage and have a external hard drive for long-term storage. And moving onwards, let's talk about RAM. So RAM is more of a temporary storage for immediate tasks. So in more spatial terms, it'll be kind of like, so if your hard drive is more like a garage, then your RAM, it will be like your tabletop. So as you can imagine, it'll be a lot more work to go all the way down to the garage and grab stuff and come back up. So RAM allows you allows your computers to have immediate access to temporary files. So more of your task is available to you right away. And this is where the space is very important. So if you want to run multiple programs or programs that require a lot of memory, so you will definitely have to have big random access memory. So the specs that we recommend is you aim for at least 16 gigabytes of RAM in order to run most architectural softwares smoothly. And moving onwards, let's talk a little bit about the operating system. And this is where the centuries debate comes in, Mac versus PC. So in the past, a lot of architectural softwares did not support Mac OS, and that is why Mac users had to bootcamp their computers. However, in the recent years, more software manufacturers are supporting Mac OS, and it is increasingly becoming even field for both operating systems. And that is why we recommend both Mac and PC, depending on your preferences. So it actually more comes down to whether you're, what your preference is and what your budget is. So we recommend PC for users who are platform agnostic, 
and who are more budget friendly. And if you're fully immersed in Apple ecosystem, so for example, if you have an iPhone, iWatch, and iPad, might, you have to have an Apple personal computer. And at which point, might as well have a personal computer that is also your workstation. And that's why we recommend either one, depending on your current situation. All right, last but not least, let's talk about our top five recommendations for laptop. So all the metrics are in US dollar and ordered from most affordable to most expensive. So starting off our list is Lenovo ThinkPad P52. This laptop is most affordable on the list. We only recommend this laptop to students who are going into university this fall. And the reason is because first off, it's affordable for students. And second, it allows minimal functionality that supports most things, simple tasks that first year students would do. Later down the road, however, you will probably have to upgrade to a stronger laptop. And in addition, technology improves every year and also they become more affordable too. So by the time you're done with first or second year and you actually need a really powerful laptop, you might be able to find a less powerful laptop for lower prices than you can today. So if that is a strategy that you want to go for, definitely go for this laptop. Otherwise, you might want to consider these laptops coming up. So second laptop that we want to recommend is Razer Blade 15. Razer is known for their high quality gaming devices. And Razer Blade is really no exception. Razer Blade boasts sleek design as well as being extremely portable and powerful. I've been following Razer Blade's price for a long time and they used to be really expensive. And the price has actually come down quite a bit over the recent years, and we strongly recommend this even for budget users now. Next on the list is Lenovo ThinkPad P53. This hunk of powerhouse will help you power through any kind of tasks that you throw at it. This portable powerhouse has made its name for being portable as well as reliable. So if you're looking for a long-term investment and a computer that will not fail you at any given point, and we strongly recommend you this laptop for your laptop choice. And next on the list is Dell's XPS 15. This laptop has been many people's favorite considering its beautiful design and high specs. They also used to be very affordable as well, and that's why it was recommended by most schools and it was seen commonly throughout various offices across the world. In the recent years, however, They've increased their price a little bit and their specs don't quite measure up to other market competitors. And that is why it's only the fourth on the list, but still a solid choice with a very well-balanced specs. And last but not least, we have MacBook Pro. This is probably the best and the only choice for Mac users. As mentioned earlier, more and more softwares are becoming native to Mac OS. And that's why it's become a perfectly viable choice for today's architects. If you want to take a closer look at all these metrics, we created a spreadsheet for you. So you can access it from the link below if you're interested. And that is it for the roundup of our laptop recommendations. We hope that this video helped you find your dream laptop and help you make the right choices. Was your favorite laptop mentioned in this video? If not, mention it in the comments and we'll add it to our spreadsheet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye now.